Okay, in this video, we're going to give you an introduction to helpers. That's right. Uh, over inside the Create panel, we do have a special area mm -hmm. dedicated strictly to helpers. Go ahead and click on it over there. Yeah, it looks like side. a little tape icon, like a yeah. little piece of tape. Little tape measure. Tape measure, yes, yeah, exactly. click on that. Awesome. Now, what you're going to find in here is a variety of what we're going to start off by calling tools. Mm -hmm. They are helper objects, mm -hmm. but you can think of them as a variety of tools that yeah. will help you accomplish specific tasks. Right, and they usually don't render on their own. They typically don't. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so what uh, we're going to do in this video is kind of give you a general introduction to the idea of, you know, kind of what helpers are in general. We'll point out a few. We'll demo a couple of them. Yeah. But at the end of this video, you'll know what helpers are in mm -hmm. a few cases in which you might want to use them. Right. Now, this is going to become important later because when we set up the controls for our stage, we're going to be employing helpers. Right. And I guess, you know, we could kind of give them a little hint of what we're going to be doing. We're going to have this helper object, mm -hmm. and we're going to apply some custom attributes to that helper object. That's right. And then we're going to um, set up reactions with those custom attributes so we can drive some of the objects in our scene, and we can drive them all from one convenient place. That's right. That's the whole point of, in this, of the type of helper we're going to be using, is having a single, convenient, easy-to-access location where we have all of the attributes that will control our stage. Right. On top of that, we're going to be showing a different kind of helper object mm -hmm. that will actually give you a visual slider that doesn't show up over in your command panel, mm -hmm. but actually in your viewport, so that you have easy access to control very, well, anything you like, as very long as you cool. hook up some control to it. Yeah. So yeah. let's go ahead and take a, a quick overview of the standard helpers. Sure thing. Well, over here, you know, we could see the standard helpers. We have our list here. Mm -hmm. um, the first one we have here is dummy. Okay. Now, yeah. what's, what's a dummy? Uh, you know, you're going to hear that a lot as you work in Max. You know, a dummy object here and a dummy object there. What's dummy? Well, it's sort of like this object. Uh, it's kind of cube-shaped. It doesn't Create really one. do a lot. Okay. Make one so they can see it. Sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Wait, there it is. You, yeah. there you have go. to drag that dummy. There it is. Very cool. And it's sort of like a very, very simple thing that doesn't render, and you can't really modify any part of it, but it has a pivot. That's right. Now, it looks like you're in wireframe mode. Yeah. Are you in wireframe mode? I am not. That's right. This thing actually will always appear to be in wireframe mode. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice that we're still in create mode, and yet this guy has no attributes or, nope. or parameters You can whatsoever. name it. You can change a color, but you won't even see the color. You can just name it. That's right. Now, yeah. what would you use something like this for? Well, there's a lot of things. If you need an invisible point to which you can link objects. Right. Like, let's say, for example, we have, you know, our dummy now floating in our scene. I'm going to go just kind of just personal preference. I'll delete this dummy and make a slightly smaller dummy. Fine. So, I know, I know. So this is dummy 01. Let me go back over to our create geometry. And let's make a cylinder. No, let's make a sphere. Okay. I, I'm changing things sure. up real You're quick. You're picky. I know, I know. And then uh, let's go back over to helpers. And what I'm going to do, guys, I know this is getting a little bit wacky. I'm going to create a second dummy. Now, why am I doing this? Check this out. Let's grab our select and link tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to link this sphere over to this dummy. Yep. I'll link this dummy over to this dummy. Wow. All right, so we have this interesting hierarchy that to a render is invisible. Right. If we were to render this out as a movie, the audience doesn't see this guy, and they don't see this guy either. Right. But now, because we've done this, we have all of this power. So I can now come over here. Let's grab the rotate tool. I'll mm -hmm. switch on auto key. We'll go up 100 frames. Sure. And let's just rotate this guy in Z several times. Oh, cool. And there you go. So there's some rotation going on here. And now we can come back over and now grab this dummy, and mm -hmm. we'll slide over to frame 100. Sure. And we'll rotate him back the other way several times as well. Sure. And now using these completely invisible objects, objects that the audience will never see. Right, but they have pivots. That's right. We now that's have point. this really, well, actually, I actually countered my animation. How lame is that? <laughs> I'm, I ought to hang my head in shame. Everyone boo me. On the other end of your, or wherever you are, make sure you're yeah. booing me right sure. now. Sure. You also might want to turn on auto key as well. Uh, that would help, I'm sure. Yeah. So let's just click over here and then just kind of up and down because I yeah. added so much rotation at this point. Was, Boom. Okay, cool. So now if I rewind and hit play. Wow. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, tilt-a-whirl things yeah. from the amusement park Something that I always used to get sick on. Crazy little spinner around. Uh -huh. And it's all through the use of a dummy object just simply used as a linking point. Right. So that is one of many uh, ways that you could use a dummy. You could drop an attribute holder modifier on right. it, and you could slap some custom attributes mm -hmm. on it. That's really about all it's going to be good for. Though. Yeah. These are very handy in uh, character rigs. Yep. So that you, uh, you know, it's just if you need an extra point to use as a, uh, a linking point or a pivot. Or kind of like a buffer, maybe. Uh, you could use them as a buffer. Sure. We'll be talking about more uh, different ways you can do that as we get later into character rigs. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and just kind of clear out the scene, or if you like, and go ahead and reset the whole thing. Yeah, give it a clean slate. 
And uh, let's take a look at some of these other dummies that we have. I'm sorry, other helper objects, mm-hmm. excuse me. So what else do we have in our list? Well, we have uh, two that kind of go together, Crowd and Delicate. Now, we don't really want to get into those now. Those are, like, for crowd simulations. Crowd simulations. That's yeah. way more advanced than, uh, very, than very we're going to get into at the moment. Yeah. Uh, from here, we've got, uh, what, Exposed Transform, which, again, is something else we're not really going to get into. Right. It's just a way to show the transform of an object that's not keyable. Or, exactly. You know, yeah, kind of get information for stuff, and it's used for scripting and stuff like yeah, that. Stuff yeah, stuff that we don't really uh, need in this case. Mm-hmm. We have a grid. Yep. What's a grid? That's so like, uh, basically, uh, you can actually see here, this is a grid in mm-hmm. the perspective view, but this is sort of like the default grid. But gotcha. what if we want a grid where we, you know, we can change the parameters, Ooh, we can one, position quick. it in a different place, Make one, make one. Okay, I'm going to hit G to hide my grid first. Okay, uh, that'll be convenient. Yeah, so now I'm actually going to make my own grid. Wow. Now notice this uh, is going to behave a lot like just a wireframe plane. Right. But uh, the idea here is that you could, using uh, some of the other tools in Max, which we're not going to dig into right at the moment, mm-hmm. if you need a custom angled grid to work from, if you need to right. snap to the points of it, if you need to uh, create objects along the surface of another object, that, you know, and you don't necessarily want this object to be visible, mm-hmm. that's what the grid's for. Right. It's sort of like a grid where we can just kind of take it more, we can position it any way we want. You can change the color of it. It's yeah, going to be really hard for you to see. Sure. Let's go back into our modify parameters, and we can actually... Uh, does it just change up here? Oh, sure, like yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, it could just change it up here, too. Yeah. <laughs> just something so that it there you go. And that yeah. was like an even less visible <laughs> color. <so laughs> that was light. awesome. White works for me. There you go. Now everybody okay. can see it. Sure. So, I mean, you can o- rotate this to any custom angle you yep. like and then you stick can, objects to it or snap right, objects to it. Right, you could scale it. it. Yeah, exactly. It's great for, you know, right. put, putting objects on it, that kind of thing. Cool. So let's go yeah. ahead and kill that off. Let's take a look at some of our other helper objects. And from here, we have the point. Now, a point is going to be a lot like a dummy. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you could actually think of it as a dummy with privileges. Right. Go ahead and create one real quick. I'm going to turn our grid back on. So you can see where you are. Yeah. And pink. And notice your uh, point. all he did was click. He did not click and drag. Right. And what's great about the point is now you could go over here and you have all these parameters that you can change. You can scale it up. Of course, you can name it. Uh, you can put in a little center marker, kind of like a little X there that's been rotated 45 mm-hmm. degrees. You can uh, set up your access tripod as well, so you can kind of see how it's positioned. That's right. You notice that here, you know, you have X, Y, and Z, and it's actually positioned, uh, you know, with it you know, kind of showing you what its orientation is. Right. The idea here is that, uh, you know, the the basic use of this guy is to designate a single point in space. Right. But he can be used for so much more. I mean, mm-hmm. you can use him as an indicator of right. a, uh, an area of mm-hmm. your scene where something's going to happen. You could use it as part of a control rig. Like, mm-hmm. you could uh, attach maybe your character's wrist up to one of these guys so you can grab this little point helper and move it around your character's sure. arm will follow. Uh, you can also control a lot of the different ways you see this guy. Of course, you know, right. we have the center marker he was talking about. You can actually make it look like a dummy. Yeah, you can switch off cross, and now the whole thing's invisible, yeah. which is very confusing. But you can make it look like a box, just right. like a dummy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can c- switch on constant screen size, which is very cool, because now as we zoom in and out, it maintains the same size, which can be very useful for some character rigs. Sure. can also get in your way on some character rigs. Right, but, but make sure we don't really know what character rigs are right now. You got, so well, we're not going to get into that. A control system for a character. If you think of a character as a digital puppet, mm-hmm. uh, it would be like the little pieces of wood and joints and strings that actually make the thing dance. Oh, very cool. That's the simplest way and to think of a We're actually going to create a little rig for our ball character coming up. All yeah. this and more coming yes. soon on Max Fundamentals. Woo-hoo. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and switch off constant mm-hmm. screen size. You can switch all the way, uh, draw on top which means if we were to put another object over this, you'd right. still see it. So I could come in here, maybe go back to create. Let's make, uh, I don't sphere. know. Sphere. Monolith Sphere. I'm going to make a box. And boom, there you go. And yep. is it still drawing on top? I don't actually see it, but that's okay. Well, go and select it. And we'll select it. And there we go. There, now it's yeah. drawing on top. So it's got to be selected. Sure. So there you are. Now it's drawing. And uh, we can go back over to helpers, and really that's all there is to a point. Yeah. It's going to be very much like a dummy. You that can link we can control the look and feel of it a little that's bit right. more. That's right. Yeah. Again, you can link objects to it. You can mm-hmm. slap an attribute holder modifier on it. But uh, the idea is that it's uh, very much like a dummy with the ability to change how you see it. Very cool. Now, from here, we have the tape helper. Tape. Tape is fun. Real it's like easy. measuring tape. How long is this box? Well, this box is 218 max units. 
Cool. Yep. So, That's a I tape. Mean, yeah, you can also specify the length. You can mm-hmm. actually, you know, go ahead and change it on the fly as opposed to dragging it out in the viewport as well. Sure, just and a, a quick way to get measurements in the viewport. Exactly. Yeah, very cool and handy and fun. We have a protractor, which you can use uh, to gauge angles between sure. a couple of objects. Mm-hmm. We have a compass, which right now is just going to give you a compass rose in your scene. Right. Which, uh, that's actually, that actually comes standard uh, with the, uh, the, was it the sunlight or the yeah. daylight? Uh, I always get the two either, confused. Uh, I think, I think they're one and the same. Okay. They might be. I don't think that's true. I don't, we'll, we'll dig into all sure, the Sure, we'll fight about it later. later. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it slips my mind from time to time. But anyway, the compass will just give you a compass rose with north, south, east, and west on sure. it. So, I mean, that's your, your standard helpers. Of course, you have a drop-down from here as well. You have atmo- atmospheric apparati, or, <laughs> or apparatus, and this will give you various gizmos for creating, like, environment fog, which we're not going to talk about right now. Sure. We have a camera match in case you bring in some uh, outside footage and you need to match your 3DS Max camera angle to that footage. Okay. We have assembly heads, where we talked about assemblies earlier for oh, creating... Right. Uh, yeah, kind of like a custom group. Yeah, for, for creating, like, uh, lights. Like, if you actually want to build a desk lamp or mm-hmm. a ceiling lamp inside your scene and uh let's see from here we have manipulators now this Ah. is very handy in fact so handy i'm going to talk about it last yeah uh, we have various particle flow systems that we're not going to uh, talk about just yet. Yeah, we will get into those later, though. Very cool stuff. We have Vermal 97. This is some CAD stuff that we won't really be it's getting like into. virtual reality markup language. And yeah. the 97 means 1997. That was a little while ago. Yeah, that means almost a decade ago, guys. Legacy. If that tells you how much we're going to be using this. And finally, we have some reactor helpers, which are very handy. And actually, mm-hmm. most of these are already available over here inside the reactor sure, sure. toolbar. In fact, I don't think I ever really dig into this very much. But if we come back up here to manipulators, we have something that's very handy. Now, cone angle and plane angle, I'm not going to really uh, dwell on too much. This will give you, like, an angle of a cone in case you need to measure that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also attach that to a light if you need it. So sure. you can uh, a- interactively adjust a light's cone angle for a spotlight. We have a plane angle, which is going to be something very similar. And finally, we have a slider, which I, I do want to kind of address. Yeah. And a slider is going to give you a visual indicator in the form of a slider that mm-hmm. you can use and animate right in your viewport as opposed to having to... To add it to a to a, a modifier and dig it out of the command panel. Yeah, it's kind of like when we set up those custom attributes before. Instead of going to the command panel to drive those custom mm-hmm. attributes, you could actually do it in your viewport interactively with this slider. That's right. In a, in a way, it's kind of like creating custom attributes with, that already come with a slider, but it sits in your viewport. Right. I'll give a quick demo on how this works. First off, uh, let me clear out my scene. We got all this stuff. I'll just reset. You want to save your changes? No, and I really do want to reset. I wasn't kidding the first time. But the beautiful box is gone. I know, I know. But we'll come back over here to manipulators. Let's click down on slider. And Mm -hmm. all I'm going to do is just click in my scene and make one of these guys first. Okay, so just a single click, and it automatically kind of faces you, the viewer, and the perspective viewport. In fact, that's a really interesting point. I can rotate around my scene, and it always faces me. It always stays in the same position of the viewport no matter what I'm doing. Sure. Now, I can give this thing a label, so I can call this maybe my slider, and you'll notice the, the actual label appears here inside the viewport as well. Very cool. I can give this a value, so notice I'm changing the value, in this case it's going, uh, oh, yeah. as I go up past the maximum You're value. You're actually bumping up the max I'm as well. I'm pushing the max up, so yeah. you have a minimum and a maximum value for it, zero, mm-hmm. let's put this back at 100. You have an X position and a Y position, so you can interactively position this using sliders if sure. you need to. You have a width, which you can adjust if the slider's too long or too wide. Now, this doesn't change the min and the max. Right. You could argue that it changes the precision of it. Right. But, uh, you know, it's probably easiest just to think of it making it uh, bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. You can set whether or not you're snapping as you use it and what increments to which you want to snap. So right now we're snapping to hundredths. So, uh, that's a pretty small snap. It's almost like not snapping at all. Yeah, almost like not snapping yeah. at all. And finally, you can hide it if you need to. Mm-hmm. Now, the cool thing is you can control all these things you can control in here. You can control interactively in the viewport. You do not need this rollout. Very cool. Let's go ahead and right-click to get rid of that. I notice when you're hiding it, you're sort of just like collapsing it down. You weren't really hiding exactly. it entirely. Exactly. And you're yeah. going to see that uh, again here in just a moment. So, uh, you know, I can try to click and nothing happens. Yeah, all you're just selecting select. it. That's all you're doing. So how do you, how can you select it and manipulate it? Well, hang on just a second. Don't get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might be uh, at first move to, you know, grab the move tool and right. hit W, but all you're doing here is you're moving the pivot of this slider. Right. The slider actually has a pivot in right. 3D space that's... Uh, I'm not going to say completely irrelevant, mm-hmm. but it's pretty close to irrelevant because it'll always stay in this position on your viewport. Right. Now, to move this guy and to interact with it, you need to come over here to select and manipulate oh. and activate this. Yeah. As soon as you do that, you'll notice that various parts of the slider will highlight as you mouse over them. Mm-hmm. 
Now you can control all the different parameters of the slider interactively. And let me go ahead and switch over to the modifier panel just so you can see them update as I move around. First off, we have the value with a little triangle guy here. We can slide this back and forth. Sure. In this case, it only goes between our min and max, which is 0 and 100. If I were to take my maximum and bump it up to maybe, uh, well, 50. Know, bump, bump it, it up to 50. Yeah, yeah, bump it down to 50. <laughs> notice we now slide between 0 and 50. Sure. You'll notice that there's a value always visible here in the viewport. The so current see, value. That's right. Show you right where you are at all times. We can stretch it out. Notice how that's updating the width. If we need more precision or if we just need to make things bigger or smaller sure. to take up a little less screen space. We have this little box that we can drag the thing around if we need to relocate it. Notice how that updates the X and Y position in, inside the viewport. So, you know, keep it up here maybe in the upper uh, right-hand corner of your viewport. I know when I'm working, it's typically where I keep them. Notice if I maximize the viewport, it kind of slips off just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I put it up here in this corner, and then I minimize, and now it's kind of out of the way. So. Right. You know, it's it's a little it's something you got to kind of work with. Yeah, kind of depends on your screen resolution and the way Max is and set up. That's right, and yeah. kind of you know some of the things you prefer, how you like to work. I do find that you know when I'm using these guys, I will in a lot of cases drag them around while I'm working. Anyways, that's just me though. Sure. So uh, again, you can change the width of these. You also have a little plus sign you can click on, and if you click on this, you've technically hidden it, which means mm -hmm. you've slid it out of your way. Now, a nice workflow that I like to do with these, of course. Um, just let me kind of throw this in as an aside. Mm -hmm. Right now, of course, this slider does nothing. Now, we can make a, uh, the, reaction, uh, a re the reaction manager listen to this as sure. a master, which I'm not going to hook up right now. Mm -hmm. We've already been playing with a reaction manager for a little while, so I won't uh, diverge too far away. But, uh, you know, while you're animating and working with this, you can have it all nice and expanded and open. As soon as you're done animating, just go ahead, minimize it, and then maybe slide it up here to the corner of your scene in case you need it later. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, when I'm using these guys, I'll usually have a list of them running down the, the side of my viewport. Sure, okay. Now, some people don't like using these because they don't want to take up any of their viewport real estate space. Mm -hmm. It's totally cool. I did want to make sure you did get to see them, though, because they can be very, very handy. So um, I think with that, that's everything that I wanted to talk about as far as the slider is concerned and helper objects in general. Yeah, I mean, just a little intro to helper objects, the different types that you can uh, use and play with. And, that's right. Uh, you know, they're you know, like a little basic introduction to their functionality. That's right. The big guys that I really want you guys to remember and focus on would be things like the point helper and the dummy. Yep. And uh, for manipulators, the slider. slider. Now, yeah. uh, of course, we did mention a few of these others. Uh, play with them, you know, have a little bit of fun with them. Mm -hmm. Some of them you will like to use. We probably won't be using most of these throughout the class. Right. But uh, it is nice for you to know where they are in case, you know, you're working on some projects on your own. You, think, you know, how long is this object? You can yeah. grab the tape and drag it that out. That is pretty cool, yeah. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, everyone.